This video explains how to estimate ending inventory using the gross profit method. First of all, let's talk about the overall concept of the gross profit method. Um, when would you use it? Why would you care? Um, if a company wants to estimate their ending inventory, but they don't want to do a physical count, say at the end of every month, the gross profit method is kind of a good way of getting a, a rough idea where that ending inventory number is. Or if a natural disaster has occurred, such as a fire, and they need to estimate how much the ending inventory was that was lost, this is also a good way to do that. So the basic theory behind it is based on the standard cost of goods sold calculation. Okay, so before we run through our actual numbers, let's talk a little bit about that basic theory. So hopefully you're very familiar with the cost of goods sold calculation, where you start out with, here's what I started with an inventory, and here's how much I purchased. So I'm going to add that in, I'm going to subtract out any purchase discounts or returns I had, and add the freight in to say that is the total cost of all my goods that are available for sale. And if I subtract what I have left at the end in inventory, well, the rest must be the cost of what I sold. So essentially, these two items here, the ending inventory and the cost of goods sold, they both add up to cost of goods available for sale. So as you can see the little arrows here, if you switch those two around and say, okay, we do the same calculation down to the cost of goods available for sale, if I subtract my cost of goods sold, I should end up with my ending inventory. So how do we figure out what cost of goods sold is? Well, another way to find cost of goods sold right here is if you start out with your sales price or the retail selling price and you subtract out the markup, also known as gross profit, on your sales, that will give you the cost of sales. So all that's saying is that, hey, the company buys a certain item, we're going to use a pair of jeans here in a moment, and, and they have a base cost. Well, they decide we want to make a certain amount of profit, so they mark that up, and the cost plus the markup equals the retail sales price that you pay. So if we can take out that markup, that gets us back down to the cost of sales. Since this is the standard way that cost of goods sold is figured when estimating our ending inventory by the gross profit method, usually it's used by retail industries because re in retail they tend to have typical average markups that are used. So one thing we have to be aware of with the markup is that sometimes for our calculation, the markup is given as a percentage of sales, and sometimes it's given as a percentage of cost. And to explain the difference between those two, let's look at a little example here, okay? So let's say you go to buy a pair of jeans and the jeans you're looking at are 50 bucks. So that's the retail sales price. Let's say the cost to the seller, whomever that is, was only $30. So your markup was the difference between what they what they sold it to you for and what they paid is 20 bucks, right? So if it's the markup on sales, if we're calculating that, we're going to take that $20 markup and divide it by the sales price. In this case, it's 40%. If we're giving the markup on cost, we take that markup and divide it by the cost to them makes a much higher percentage, 67%. The percentage that we need to use when we are when we're trying to estimate ending inventory with the gross profit method, the percentage we need to use is always the markup on sales. Uh, and the reason for that is because right over here when we're figuring our cost of goods sold, since we start with the sales number, we need to have the markup in terms of those sales to be able to subtract apples with apples instead of apples with oranges. So if you are given markup on cost, you need to convert it to the markup on sales. And the textbook has a nice little formula to do that. Essentially that formula is you take your percentage of markup on cost and you divide that by 100%, so we'll say just 1.0 since we're doing decimals here, plus that percentage. And I'm going to change that into a percent formula here. And you notice that converted it into our markup on sales percentage, 40%. Okay. The textbook also has the conversion from markup on sales to markup on cost. 
but for purposes of the gross profit method, we really don't need to know that because with gross profit method, we're always going to be wanting to use the markup on sales. So with that background, let's go ahead and calculate using these numbers here what our estimated ending inventory would be. I'm going to go ahead and hide, well, we'll try that again. I'm going to go ahead and hide these middle rows. Hmm, if my computer will let me do that. Here we are. So we can see the problem and the modified version down here. So we're going to start out with our regular cost of goods sold calculation, our beginning inventory, which up here they told us was $200,000. So $200,000 is what we started with. We added purchases of 620 but from those purchases we we returned 30,000 so that decreased our total cost and then we did have shipping into us freight in so that increased our total cost on our inventory by 28 so that those all together should give us if we add them up here should give us our total cost of goods available for sale going to move that over the calculation over to the next column um, because here now we're going to do that um, the calculation that will give us an estimate of what our cost of goods sold, sold is so we start with our sales at retail price which is right here 890 uh, unless the markup so here we're asked to compute ending inventory assuming that Part A is that the gross profit is 25% of sales. Okay, So as we said before, we, we do want the percentage as a percent of sales. So for, for Part A, we're good. We don't have to convert that percentage. So our markup was just 25% of this number. So we'll take that times 0.25. So that was our markup. So if we subtract our markup, let me underline that. So I'm going to take our gross sales and subtract out the markup. This number here should be our cost of goods, how much it cost us to buy those, those goods. So then if we take, here's the cost, all the cost of the goods I had available to sell, here's the cost of goods I did sell, then what's left should be my ending inventory. So I'll take that minus this number right here. So under we're assuming under method A, I have $83,000 in ending inventory. Let's look at part B. See, part B says, all right, let's assume that percentage is 25% of cost. So remember, anytime it's a percentage of cost that they give us in the markup, we've got to convert that. So let's just do a little conversion factor over here to the side. Remember, you take we take the percentage of cost and we divide that by 100 plus the percentage of cost. And these are all in percents. That's why I did 1.0 instead of 100. It's all representing percentage. And I will need to convert that to a couple decimal places. Okay, so 25% on cost equals 20% on sales. And here's just a little gut check. Your percentage on sales should always be less than your percentage on cost. Because since cost is a lower number and you're taking that markup over a lower number, that's going to end up in a higher percentage that if you're taking it as a percentage over sales. So if you're trying to convert cost to sales and you come up with a higher percentage, something went wrong. Okay, so let's take that back over here. Nothing is gonna change in our beginning calculation. Our sales will stay the same. However, our mar markup here under estimate B is only going to be 20%. So that changes our estimated cost of goods sold and takes down our estimated ending inventory. So that's a real rough uh, calculation on how to do the gross profit method to estimate ending inventory.